The Capitals might have a new home. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the news that the Capitals might have a new home, that uh, they might be moving out to Virginia, away from D.C. We'll talk about that in this episode. We will talk about ultimately what is the Capitals' identity going to be under Spencer Carberry. And then we'll talk about the what players on the Hershey Bears are due for a promotion based on the fact that they won the Calder Cup and they played so well. In this episode, we are joined by Bob Matthews of the Bob Matthews Podcast. Bob, welcome to the show. Thunder Dan, thank you so much for having me back. Always excited to chop it up with you and talk some pucks. So some exciting news, of course, as the Hershey Bears won the Calder Cup. I mean, let's face it, the Capitals didn't get the result that they were looking for. And uh, but the, the the Bears, they found a way to rally and win, and they did it against great odds. As you know, no team had won a road game except for game seven when it all mattered. The Hershey Bears found a way to overcome. They were down two to nothing, and they found a way to rally. Um, so for me, I think that there are some players that are due for a promotion. I think that they were due for a promotion before the Calder Cup, but now I think even more so. And we could talk about a player like Connor McMichael, who seems like he is poised for bigger and better things. What are your thoughts on Connor McMichael? And is he ready for bigger things this next season? Hey, I tell you what, what more could he do at the AHL level? No, I, I totally think, that I will be shocked if he is not on the opening day roster for the Capitals. Uh, You know, you can, you can debate whether that was a good move from Peter Laviolette sending him down and spending most of the year in Hershey. I happen to think it was not. I thought that, that Laviolette kind of deferred a little bit too much to the veterans. Um, But you can't argue with, with the results down there. You know, he had a little bit of a slow start in the season, but boy, did he come on in the postseason. And of course, he was the one that started the comeback there in game seven uh, that led to, you know, that led to the the Bears winning the, the Calder Cup there in overtime and a hell of an end to that game seven as well. I mean, you, you can't beat that. That was literally the last professional hockey game in North America of the season. And you've still got to go an extra period after that in order to win it. I mean, when you think about it, that, that's just mind boggling that we got to that situation. And it was one of those things where I was watching the game and I went into it and already it was a late start because it was a West coast game. And I'm like, I'm going to pay for this tomorrow at work. And I did as it went to overtime, but alas, it was all worth it as they won the Calder cup, the first time since 2010 and uh, their 12th Calder cup trophy they they lead all of the ahl they broke a record for it so um really ex- a lot of excitement to bounds uh taking a look at hunter shepherd he was number two in all of the ahl during the regular season and won the mvp where does he fit in with the bears and the capitals just based on the fact that he's an mvp he's an unrestricted free agent what do the bears what do the capitals do with hunter shepherd shep uh, unfortunately, I, I think he's he's probably going to go. Especially, you know, you figure as a uh, you know having the great playoff uh, season that he did, um, you figure somebody's going to give him a shot with their big club next year. So I think it's going to be really hard for the organization to keep him around. I mean, he's at the age where you know he's he's 
he's got to make the leap into the NHL. And he's just not doing that on a day in day out basis in Washington because of the fact um, that you've already established goaltenders in DC. So I I'm sure that, that, um, uh, that they'll try to, uh, resign him, but I'm just, I'm really, really um, skeptical. And I just, I, I, unfortunately there's just no place for him to go. So it would not surprise me if Hunter Shepard is in another, is in a different colored sweater next year. And it's a different, it's a difficult position. As we know, Zach Fukale is head, headed over to the KHL. The one good thing for the Capitals is they have a plethora of different talent down in ECHL, the AHL. They're always drafting new goalies. So I think they'll be okay uh, no matter what the case is. But another player that kind of jumped off the page was Snively. Uh, one of the things that I like about his game is he makes the most of his opportunity when he gets a promotion up to the Capitals. Um, do you see Snively fitting in? It's a difficult thing because everyone, and we'll talk about this in the next segment here with the new coaches, they're like, finally, a new coach. All these young players that we heard about for years, they're going to come on and they're going to be on this team. And to that, I say, where are they going to fit? Where does Connor McMichael fit? Where does Joe Snively fit on this team? Who's coming out of the lineup to accommodate them? It is a difficult position for the Caps to be in, isn't it? It is. And I guess that's why Brian McClellan and Spencer Carberry are going to get the big money because they're the ones that got to figure that out. But yeah, and especially with Snively, because, you know, here's a guy, he's been up, he's been down, you know, he's already made his NHL debut. But if you figure out a place for him in the lineup, are you doing it at the expense of some of the younger guys or the younger prospects? I mean, Joe Snively is not what you would consider a young prospect anymore. And Everything that the Capitals have been talking about this offseason, and they've been talking about two things, getting some help in the top six and getting younger and getting faster. And yes, Snively is technically younger than some of the vets, but still, even if he just exploded next year and became a full-blown star, you know, how many years can you expect that out of him? And more importantly, how many years do you have him under contractual control you know, vis-a-vis -vis the salary cap. And I don't know, I, I'm literally just kind of spitballing that, you know, it, it may be for all I know, he's got three or four more years left. But even if he did, again, you invested some very recent draft capital in Hendrick Slot-Pierre. You've got, as we said, McMichael, who needs to come up, Ethan Frank, who, you know, came back there in game six and game seven and was hugely instrumental there. There's a guy that came out of nowhere. And it, it, again, at, at 20 or 21 years old, it's a lot more valuable long term than a Joe Snively is who may be able to help you today. But Brian McClellan's got to think about tomorrow as well. And it is exciting to think about because, you know, there's some players that aren't going to be ready for next year. You take a look at Vinny Iario, you hear about Ivan Miroshnashenko that was able to break his KHL deal, uh, which looks like he's going to be playing on the Bears to start the season. So excitement abounds uh, for this team, a lot of young talent. And I think that this team is poised to be really great uh, for years to come. All right. So coming up here, we will talk about ultimately what is the Capitals identity going to be? under Spencer Carberry. We'll talk about that straight ahead. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to join today. And even if you're watching a game and you're not that into it, if you have a little bit of money on it, it makes it that much more exciting. So don't miss your chance to snag a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Dollars when you join FanDuel today. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and subscribe or follow Locked On Capitals wherever you find your podcasts and on YouTube. I have a lot of great guests lined up for you this summer, just like Bob Matthews today. So make sure and subscribe to Locked On Capitals Aww. today. 
<laughs> All right. In this next segment here, we are going to talk about Spencer Carberry and what will the identity of the Capitals be under Spencer Carberry? It is exciting. A youth infusion. Uh, let's face it. He is going to be the youngest head coach in all of the NHL, 41 years old. If you're listening to this podcast and you're a teenager, you're like, that's old. Just wait till you're older. That's 41 is actually not that old. <laughs> and uh, we yeah. find out that they, they also uh, filled out the position with Mitch Love, who was going to be leading up the defense. So a lot of excitement abounds. But the question now is, how is a Spencer Carberry Capitals team going to look different than a Peter Laviolette team? Uh, for me, so let's just take a look at Spencer Carberry, what he did up in Toronto. Uh, he had the Toronto Maple Leafs power play near the top in all of the NHL. And you take a look at the Capitals, it was ranked 16th. I know that he is not necessarily going to be running the power play, but you better believe whoever is in charge of it, he's going to be looking over them and saying, I'm going to be keeping my eyes on you. For you and what you know of Spencer Carberry, how much better and how different will this Capitals team look like under Carberry? Yeah, well, and full disclosure, you know, I didn't see a lot of Maple Leafs games when they were playing the Caps last year. So I am not what you would call an aficionado on Spencer Carberry's uh, style. But I would have to say that you look at what he did with the Maple Leafs last year. And you got to think that, and again, we've talked about this before, but one of the reasons you can give the benefit of the doubt to this organization is you give them the, because of the past success, you give them the benefit of the doubt that Brian McClellan feels that Spencer Carberry is the right guy to come in here and, you know, get this team, this power play, this team in general back on the winning track. I think you're going to see it. I think you're going to see the team be a lot quicker Obviously, I think you're going to see it be better on the power play. Um, and I think that, again, if the veteran court can stay healthy, I think this is a tremendous opportunity for them because it looks like there are some really good pieces down in Hershey that can help sometime very, very soon, as in next year. What better a way for these young kids to learn how to be winners in the NHL than to do it by – looking at Alex Ovechkin and Nicholas Backstrom and Tom Wilson and TJ Oshie and John Carlson. I mean, it, it, that's the best way to do it. So I think it's, I think it's going to be an exciting season. And again, I think they're going to play a lot more up and down with a lot more speed than we saw last year. And I think that he's going to be a head coach that has a lot more intensity. When I'm pulling thumbnails for the show, oftentimes I'll look at the different pictures and every picture I see of him, there's veins sticking out of his, his forehead or his <laughs> neck. And he's just his clenched jaw. He, I, I already like a lot about him. He just, he cares a lot. I don't like a nonchalant coach. Like, We'll get them next week, guys. Uh, I want a guy that's like, no, I'm going to put my homework in and we are going to do our level best to win every single game we possibly can. And they also, I think, got a really good assistant coach, like I said, that's going to be running the defense in Mitch Love, who is the assistant coach or was the assistant coach of the Calgary Wranglers, the AHL affiliate of the Calgary Flames. And um, I think that, you know, just taking a look at his track record, the last two seasons, he took them to the Pacific regular season uh, final. So I think that uh, I there's on paper. He seems like he's going to be a good coach as well. Uh, when he was a player, he was known as a pest. He was known as a fighter. So a lot of intensity going on in that Capitals locker room. How is that going to translate to the ice? That is going to be exciting. But for me, I think that you are going to finally see Connor McMichael on this team. Um, if not at the start of the season, darn near the start of the season. And what makes Spencer Carberry so great is he already has that rapport with your Connor McMichaels, your uh, LaPierre, those kind of players, because he was the coach of the Bears. He was the coach of the Stingray, so he knows how what makes these players tick. Um, is that what's exciting for you is finally to see this youth infusion on this team? I don't think it's going to be, you know, a bunch of teenagers out on the ice out there, but finally some of these names that we've heard about for years, we'll talk like we talked about Snively, we'll talk about McMichael, um, you know, players like that that we've heard about for years. That's going to be exciting, isn't it, to finally see some of these young players? And I think that's going to be part of their identity. Yeah, I, I definitely so I think it 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 it's okay that it's happening now. I wished it would have happened about a year ago, but 
hey, you know, that was just the hand that you were dealt. And it was still, I think, you know, a, a byproduct of the Stanley Cup run in 2018. So it's okay. Happening now is the exact uh, right time for it to happen. Um, these guys have got to be able to play a couple of years with what's left of the core. And if they do, I really do think, again, because of the team and the organization that McClellan's built here, I, I think that, you know, you have to, again, assume that this next wave of players coming in has the potential to be really, really good. And I, which is why I think it's great that, again, they're going to get the tutoring um, under, you know, of, of a guy like Spencer Carberry, who they already know and they're comfortable with and the veterans on the team. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. And intensity and intensity and a change. That's what I like about it the most. One of the things that we knew about Lavi, one of the things we knew about Barry Trotz, they weren't, you know, crazy about, you know, playing a lot of the young players. And, uh, but, you know, in all fairness, I think that, you know, it's a different playing field than it is right now. I think there was a mandate on Peter Lavulette to win games. There was no mandate to bring along young players, but it's changed now. And Brian McClellan has said as much as he wants a coach that can bring along the young players. And then the above all end all is winning a Stanley Cup. All right. So coming up here, we will talk about will the Capitals have a new home in the future? We'll talk about that straight ahead. All right. Welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In today's episode, we have Bob Matthews of the Bob Matthews Podcast. And this news was breaking uh, in late June, and this will be broadcasting in July. But the, the possibility that the Capitals might have some new digs, as they say, in, in Arlington, in North Virginia. So what are your initial thoughts on that, um, just based on Nijer? reaction the capitals moving from capital one arena in dc and moving to virginia what are your thoughts on that don't do it <laughs> i think i think they're fine just where they are but but obviously it's an it's an economic situation uh if they can get the city of Arlington to give them whatever it is they feel they're lacking in dc then, yeah, you know, if, if they give them the right deal, they're probably going to move across the river. Uh, ultimately, though, I, I think that you're going to see them. I hope you're going to see them stay in D.C. I, I think that's just that's the right vibe for this for this organization. You can't you, you can't uh, argue with the results. I mean, how many years now has has Capital One Arena been sold out? Uh, so, you know, the arena's filled. It's, you know, easy to get to because it's right off of the metro line. But again, you know, it all comes down to money. And if there's more revenue to be made in Arlington, um, that's where they'll go. Let's let's just hope that D.C. can give them whatever improvements they feel they need for the arena. I mean, I've only been there a, a couple times, but I do like uh, uh, Capital One Arena. But per a Washington Post report, Monumental Sports and Entertainment is meeting with city government officials about relocating the Caps and the Wizards, of course, both owned by Ted Leonsis to Arlington in Northern Virginia. Their new home would be relocated near Amazon's new HQ2 in Crystal City. It is unclear what exactly the new venue would be. Um, but, you know, in a, in a league where everything's got to be you know fancy and new you take a look at the new arena out in seattle and it is most impressive you take a look at the new arena where the islanders play i think that there's mm -hmm. just this pressure to kind of keep up with the joneses if you will to have the new greatest thing and there's also been some things that were brought into question i remember uh when they're playing in the postseason when they play in the postseason that there's been issues with humidity and stuff like that building up in the arena and uh, it's been difficult that way i don't know all the ins and outs and what makes capital one arena outdated maybe it is just a money thing but my experiences uh, being in Capital One Arena, is that it's a great facility, all things considered. Is it the latest? Is it the greatest? No, but I think that it's okay. But the one thing I know is that Ted Leonsis and you know his partners probably have more money than most anyone out there. So I don't think that that's going to be an issue. Um, for someone that isn't from the D.C. area, how great of a distance is that approximately from D.C. to that new location? 
I'm not exactly sure, you know, time wise, if you, you know, if you think about where Amazon's, um, where Amazon's HQ2 is and the district, um, you know, probably as the crow flies 10, 15 miles, uh, but then you put beltway traffic into it and it, it could be up to an hour. Um, but, you know, again, it's kind of the main thing is that most of the fans, certainly there are many, many that live in the district, but there are also a lot that are coming in from Virginia, coming in from Maryland, stuff like that. So, you know, it, it, it all depends. It, it really does. Um, but, uh, you know, again, I, I think that it's going to be a heck of a lot easier for anybody to get into DC. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it, it just, you know, because of the fact that you can stay outside the beltway, get on the Metro and then just get off when you, when you get to the arena uh, there in Chinatown. Yeah. And one of the things that was said here, this piece in the hockey news is he added the capital one arena brings 3 million people down to the city. And then there needs to be an emphasis on making upgrades and prioritizing safety. Apparently crime around capital one arena uh, is pretty bad, but um, you know, I think that that's kind of true. I also heard the same thing around Nats park as well. So I think that, you know, there's a lot of crime in major metropolitan areas. It's just kind of the way that it is. Uh, but what are some of your most fond memories of Capital One Arena? Of course, uh, the Stanley Cup run and all that kind of thing. Uh, but for you, what what are some of the most fond memories that you have right. of Capital One Arena at the time Verizon Center? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I guess the the my most favorite one was uh, was I was a game three or game. No, I guess it was game four. Uh, of the finals when Joe Gibbs was the fan of the game. And, you know, he was up there with the guys that uh, blow the boo boo or however you pronounce it um, to do let's go caps before they, before they hit the ice. Um, you know, that one was, was fantastic. Uh, some of the postseason wins that they had there, you know, in years past, even when they didn't get under, over the hump, I just, I guess the, the biggest, the best, memory for me is just the collective overall sound that you get in there when the caps are playing well when it's a big game and whether it's pittsburgh in there or the rangers or whoever and you just know that you know it, it's it's a game that they really want maybe it's a game they have to have it's just you know it's the vibe that you used to get at rfk when the redskins slash football team slash commanders used to play there <laughs> That's the Capital One Arena has been for the last 20 years or so. That's been the big time sports venue for D.C. sports fans. So, I mean, it is exciting to think about. Like I said, Ted Leonsis has more money than most anyone. So I know that uh, if he's putting in for some of that facility, that it is going to be top notch. Bob Matthews, I want to thank you once again for joining mm -hmm. us on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Why don't you tell everyone where we can find you online? Why don't you tell people a little bit about your podcast? So the podcast is a very original name for it as well. The Bob Matthews Podcast. We're part of the Hockey Podcast Network. So you can find us at thehockeypodcastnetwork.com. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, uh, wherever fine podcasts are sold. You can follow along on Twitter at Bob Matthews 965 Check us out. Um, you can you can listen kind of to the year in review right now as we're taking a little bit of a vacation, getting ready for Commander's Training Camp to ramp up next month. Um, but give us a listen, subscribe and download, help us boost the numbers there. We appreciate all of uh, all of the locked on fans that check us out after you check out Dan. So Dan first, then us. We're perfectly fine with that. All right, Bob, once again, thank you for joining us on this edition. And thank you all for joining us on this edition of Locked On Capitals. And are you a fan of D.C. sports? Well, Locked On has got you covered. There is Locked On Nationals, Commanders, and Wizards. So no matter what major D.C. sport, Locked On has got you covered. All right, once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.